I've been thinking a lot about the growth rate needed for the carbon removal industry. So it, kind of in, in big terms, the big kind of napkin math is that we're removing about 10,000 tons per year in 2022. And the IPCC scientists say we need to remove 10 billion tons per year by 2050. So maybe the numbers are different a little bit in 2022, maybe the target's a little bit different. But in general, like that's kind of a rough, uh, rough estimate means we need to grow a million fold in terms of our capacity to remove carbon every single year. So I've written about this before, I've talked about this before, and what I had talked about was kind of comparing to the growth of uh, computer chips in terms of their uh, kind of in terms of their efficiency, in terms of their speed, I had these great conversations with, with Rodney, Rodney Payne, uh, John Lynn, Robert Hoagland, uh, Grant Faber about this. And, you know, the, the efficiency thing, actually, that's not what we're going for. We're going for really is capacity. So we need to model the capacity growth of carbon removal. Uh, that's what needs to grow a million fold over the next 28 odd years. Um, capacity is what we need to grow. So I've been really curious about that. We've been having this whole uh, thread on Airminer Slack about it. Uh, and, and the thing that I want to hone in on is like, the, is the big question, which is, uh, you know, how do we compare carbon removal or how do we compare where carbon removal needs to go to these other industries? How do we compare carbon removal to, or rather, maybe not even how do we compare, but just what did the growth rates look like for the early stage of, of solar development for the mid stages of the later stages of solar development? What were the growth rates for that? How about for computing? Uh, how about for cars, engines? What about for uh, somebody John Lynn suggested on, on Slack? You know, what about the growth of the Manhattan Project, nuclear power, things like that, weapons? Uh, I was talking with Mark and Sarah about this and they suggested, what about porn, right? Like there's, there's these new technologies, these new industries that, uh, you know, they have their own growth rate and it's not consistent over time. Sometimes it's, uh, or at least I'm assuming it's not consistent over time. Maybe it is. Um, and so the, the question I'm, I'm, I'm really curious about is like, what are the growth rates of these other industries? How, how does carbon removal need to match up? Does carbon removal need to grow uh, as fast as the computing industry grew from 1950 to 1970, kind of like those early years of Intel being created and things like that. Um, how do we have this million fold growth rate in, in capacity? Um, how does it compare to solar? Do we need to be kind of that 1950 around the, around the era where, where solar was invented, 1950 to 1970? Do we need that kind of growth rate? Is it more like a 2020 to, or 20, 2000 to 2020 growth rate? Are those different? Uh, I got a lot of questions about this. Don't yet have answers. That's partly what makes it uncomfortable, right? It's like, I don't have answers about this. I'm, I'd, I'd love to hear more about this. I'd love if somebody's digging into it or, or uh, you know, asking about it. Maybe there's a different question that we should be asking than, uh, than this. But I think for me, it does come back to what are the growth rates of other industries and how do they compare to where we need to go with carbon removal of this million fold capacity growth rate over 28 years. So that's kind of the, the, the big idea. You know, I think this, this gets me thinking about a lot of different things in terms of uh, it, it, it starts to open up different questions. I think is if we can answer that question, then we can start to really point not just million dollar purchases, but we can start to point billions of dollars and instead of just one year budgets of, okay, we're going to make this purchase this year, we're going to you know make this policy this year, we can start to unlock billions of dollars over you know, 10 year plans, 20 year plans, 28 year plans, right? Um, so it really does seem like this, this unlock for phase two of carbon removal. What I'm thinking about is phase one is kind of this, this sort of consensus that we need to do carbon removal and kind of categorically like how much. And that was really, I mean, geez, that defined like the first or the previous perhaps six years of carbon removal. It was really this idea of like, do we need to remove carbon? Is it important? You know, how much do we need to remove? 
we kind of six years ago we, we were asking those questions and six years later today we have a much much better idea of actually what needs to happen yes we need to remove carbon from the air yes we need to remove uh about 10 gigatons per year by 2050. so yes carbon rule is is important in that sense and so that, that's phase one and so phase two is more like all right well, well how do we get there how do we do this million fold growth in capacity over the next 28 years? And so similar to phase one, we're at the beginning of phase two, which is when we start to ask questions. And it's really important to ask questions, especially if they sound like dumb questions, especially if they seem like, huh, is that the right question to ask? So that's kind of where I'm at. This question is, how do other industries, how have other industries and other phases of industries grown and what can we learn about that to, uh, in terms of as we, as we plan ahead for, for carbon removal? What, what industries do we need to match? Uh, what industries are faster than carbon removal, if, if any? Uh, maybe carbon rule has to grow faster than any other industry ever, uh, which is something that I've said in the past. And now I'm wondering if that's, if that's actually the case, uh, to start to look at some of these solar growth numbers and computing growth numbers. Um, those those things have grown pretty darn fast, um, but I don't have all the data in terms of the in terms of the capacity data. It's actually kind of tricky because um, a lot of, a lot of kind of data is around um, not capacity but more uh, like like a cost of a chip, a cost of a megahertz or a gigahertz or a cost of a, a kilowatt. I think it's kilowatt solar. Um, yeah, I think I think that's how you measure solar panels, um, but it doesn't speak to capacity. And that's what we really need for carbon removal is, is we need capacity, we need 10 gigatons per year. Um, and so, uh, yeah, pointing, pointing more in, in that direction and kind of some question around that that seems like it's going to really unlock phase two. Or maybe there's a couple questions that are going to unlock phase two. Um, one funny thing, though, that, uh, that got me thinking was, was um, I mean, this stuff is super fascinating to me. I remember... Uh, gosh, like really early on in carbon rule, like 2017, 2018, I remember like making a spreadsheet of like, yeah, what's compound growth rate? What does that look like? And what do we need to get to? And it's just compound compound growth is, is it's it's fascinating. Um, and so this, as I started to dig into uh, the other day, dig into the, the growth rate of um, like the world computer power combined, um, like the world computer capacity combined. I looked at the growth rate for that and it looked really similar actually to the growth rate of uh, like computer speeds, uh, transistors per, per like per chip. Um, but those things are totally different. Like the global capacity of computing, how is that connected to the, um, to the efficiency per chip? And so I was talking with uh, Grant Faber about this and he was like, actually it's, it's not uh, totally uh, like, disconnected like those things are related like the more efficient you can make something the faster it can grow um and so those things actually do have a similar growth rate um and it's actually a kind of a relationship to it so anyway this like that's this whole compound growth rate stuff to me is, is mesmerizing um but nonetheless we we're at this new phase of of, of carbon removal the beginning of phase two it means we have, need to ask lots of questions and and see where they see where they lead. Um, there's a whole thread on Airman Slack about this, kind of mapping out different different growth rates, different charts, asking different questions. Um, but the, the key question that I think hangs over all of this is is how how do we get there? We need this million fold improvement by 2050. Um, I forget what the compound like. If you just kind of compound over the whole the whole period, it's some 40, 50, 60 percent per year. Um, I think it was anyway, again, just kind of asking what are the questions? What is the compound growth rate? Um, then it opens up other questions, right? Like I talked about these these phases of the solar industry. Are there phases? I'm not sure, but I, I it, it sort of intuitively makes sense. There'd be kind of a maybe a slow growth and then there's a fast growth phase and there's a slow growth phase. Um, this kind of s curve, maybe not. Maybe it's just kind of more of a gradual, like it's just always the same compound compounding rate. Um, but that seems important. Like if you want to kind of understand this is, you know, if there are these different phases, which phase do we want carbon removal to be in? Obviously the steepest we can get, 
Um, but how do we compare it to other uh, to other industries? So, you know, that's the big the big questions that are coming up. Um, there's a great thread on on anywhere in Slack about this. Uh, I think it's you know again we're entering this phase where we need to be asking these questions and 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 overall asking the question is this the right question or is this uh, is there is there a way to get this right? Um, the, the answer is yeah, probably not. We probably just need to throw a lot of questions at it and kind of it'll it'll resolve itself as we go. Um, and so I encourage everybody to, to keep asking these questions. And especially if you feel like a question is the wrong question or a question is going to, you know, you're going to feel stupid for asking it. That's probably an indicator that's probably more of an interesting question. Um, you saw me throw like, so I include porn in here, right? Like that's kind of like weird. Um, like what's the porn industry, but just, uh, you know, uh, this sort of this theme that like, oh, kind of new technologies are adopted by the porn industry first or, or something like that with, um, with like DVDs and Blu-ray and stuff like that. Um, okay, great. Like maybe there's nothing to, to learn from that or like nuclear weapons. Like, wow, that's kind of scary. Do we want to learn from nuclear weapons growth? Like, yeah, well, okay. Like it's, it's fine to ask these questions during the beginning of phase two, because it's, you know, there's, we're really trying to figure out what these, what these core questions are. So overall, we need to get to 10, 10 gigatons per year by 2050. We're somewhere around 10,000 or 100,000 or a million. Um, so we need to, you know, we need to grow a certain amount. How do we get there? What can we learn from other industries? What industries can we compare to? That's the questions that I'm super curious about. Uh, if you're curious and digging in, uh, or if you have, you know, some answers to that, I'm looking for, there's, there's a whole thread, like I mentioned, um, there's some data coming together. Um, maybe there's other questions that you're wondering about too. Love to hear those. Uh, so there we are, 2022. What can we learn from, from other industries to advance carbon removal?